this. I got a Cuban model. It's a, a, a Infinity G3 Salmon S. Infinity G3 Salmon S. I done already uh, did the motor, the door jams, and the wheels. So I'm going to do an acid watch. I wasn't going to do it at first, but considering this car been a early 2000, I think it's probably best. So I'm going to start up top. I done already soaked this car down, since I done already gave it a, a wash, an exterior wash. And like I said, I wasn't going to give it an acid wash. I was going to rinse the soap off, off of it after giving it an exterior to wash and I thought maybe it would be best for me to just go ahead and give it an uh, acid wash. The last thing I want is to have to bring it back over here to give it an acid wash or spend a lot of time buffing on the exterior with the wool pad and cutting cream trying to get the acid water spots out the ones that'll come out because I didn't give it an acid wash. So, uh, with me, any car that's over uh, 15 years old, sometimes salad depends on the car, I try to do an acid wash. There are cases, some of the new cars we get have some kind of fallout on them that we don't know. We don't know if it's pollution, rail dust, doing the uh, transportation from bringing the car from where is that to whatever dealership is going to. We don't know what be on it. So a lot of times if we don't have acid wash, uh, if we don't have fallout removal, some form of fallout removal, we'll just go ahead and get an acid wash. At least I will. Now, I wish it was a way around it, because we're talking about 2022, 2023 cars that you have to give us acid wash. And note, when you have to do an acid wash, it just, it just doesn't end with just an acid wash. You're going to have to bust the car back out to paint. And it's a good possibility just a one-step buff. It's not going to work, so you can easily find yourself doing almost a cut and buff, a three-step buff job, just to get the paint back to looking the way it was before you gave it the acid wash. A lot of today people call it paint correction. We call it cut and buff. Back when I was first started buffing cars out, they called it cut and buff. And then it had several names. Exterior buff, cutting buff. Now the word is paint correction. I didn't know what a paint correction was, even though I've been buffing since 1980 professionally. And one of my co-workers taught me seven years ago. EJ, you know, uh, uh, paint correction, Ain't nothing but a cut and buff. You know, we've been doing cut and buff for a lot of years. I'm like, oh man, for real? I said, what happened? They said they just gave it a different name to make it sound good, sound more up to date, because cut and buff was getting to sound old. So now they call it paint correction. But it's basically the same thing. You're still using the buffer with a wool pad and whatever compounds you need and uh, finishing cream to make the car, to, to restore the paint shine back. So, I still call it a cutting buff, but I try to remember when I'm talking with someone that's a younger generation, I try to remember paint correction. All right, I done washed this car down with uh, acid, and gave it an acid bath. This is what some people call old school. I don't call it old school because I never stopped doing these ever since I learned how to do my first one in 1980. But I will say this, for us being old school, 
everything I do, I basically, when it comes down to automotive detailing, I do like I used to do. Uh, I change some things with the time, but the essence of what a professional automotive detail is supposed to be, I never change that. Yeah, I've learned some different ways to do certain things, and I've changed with the demanding times of paints and stuff like that. But the bottom line, I'm a professional automotive detailer, and I consider myself one of the best exterior buffers out there, especially in my age group.